Well, first off, my name is Brian Miller. My company's name is Zapmill. Uh, we're, you know, basically teach game design and game development uh, to youth ages uh, anywhere from uh, 11 to 17. You guys are actually going to be my oldest students ever. <laughs> Although I am working on uh, with uh, uh, one of the counties here in Georgia about teaching uh, middle school computer science teachers this same software and program. So we're it's uh, working on it. Hopefully, well, supposed to have had it at the beginning of this year, but you know how things go with the educational system. Lots of red tape. Anyway, um, Fusion 2.5. Yeah, we're, we're looking at the free version right now. I'm not connected to the internet, but otherwise you'd be seeing uh, some of their web page stuff right here uh, in the main screen. You were asking me, what is Fusion Excel in? Like, no, why would you use it over something else? Uh, because there is no scripting language whatsoever, all right? My degree is in computer sciences focused on game development, right? And I, in my degree, one of the most important things that I learned from my degree is that I don't want to be a full-time programmer. I can't stand it, <laughs> you know? But, um, you know, I've dabbled around in uh, several different, I've been, I've been teaching game design and game development to kids at summer camps and after school programs for about four years now. Um, <clears throat> and, uh, you know, I've used Game Maker Studio, I've used RPG Maker, um, I've used Unity, <laughs> you know, scary, but yes, I did use Unity one time and uh, the results were pretty cool. Um, and it was a two week camp, but um, last year, uh, I'm the live streaming manager for GGDA. Um, yeah, we stream every Tuesday. Um, last year, I was introduced to uh, Chris Carson of um, Fusion uh, Click Team, and uh, he was doing some workshops and stuff like that. And I started watching him build games on Fusion, and was just like, "Wow, this is awesome!" Because, like I said, there isn't any programming whatsoever. It's based purely on logic, and one of the things I like to do the most, like for, for any of my students, and I've got written permission from the video owner, if I was connected to the internet, I'd show you, but um, uh, the ch YouTube channel is Josh Darnett. Uh, he's at this thing called Exact Ex Instructions, where he has his kids write out specific instructions on how to make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. If you pay attention to the video, you can see it's daylight outside. You know, and by the end of the video, it's dark. You know, so it's obviously taken him several hours to do this. And that's just the thing, it's logic. You know, uh, how many steps does it take to accomplish what it is that you're trying to do? And you need to be as specific as possible. And one of the biggest things about programming is, you know, it's not the language. You know, it's not the syntax, it's not the scripting, what you need. Um, okay. <laughs> uh, it's not the language, it's not the scripting, it's the logic that I struggled with the most, you know. And so when I found out, you know, that this is literally pure logic, I was like, this is an awesome program. So. Is it blocks that you connect to each other? And that's that a uh, program like Scratch. Yeah, uh, that yeah that's uh, made by MIT. Um, and it's pretty cool. It's like putting together little puzzle pieces. If this, then what, you know, kind of thing. No, we don't have puzzle pieces and stuff like that in here. Um, as soon as he gets done breaking my computer, I'll show you around. Mm. <laughs> Leave it to Matt. Thank you, sir. Oh, oh, yes, yes. Now I see what you're doing. Some that makes sense now. Some virtual reality games that have custom rooms or other customizable options for players, they'll use chipsets, so to speak, to connect mm -hmm. boxes to each other and, and make a, a function. Right, uh, right, right. Um, it definitely beats typing in VR or something. To, uh, to think um, some of the uh, biggest games that have been made uh, using Fusion, um, uh, you ever heard of uh, Five Nights at Freddy's? Yes. Okay, that was made in Fusion. Interesting. How about N Noble Armada? We got to give props oh, to the Noble Armada. That was, I didn't know that yes. Was yes. Yeah. That's, yeah. Uh, that's Andrew Greenberg's game, uh, game that he's. Has it released it yet? It's uh, in the process. I know it's Kickstarter. It I, he tried to get it on Steam Store real recently. I don't remember if that happened. I don't think it's there. Hey! You good? Yep, we are interwebbed. Thank you, sir. Uh, Freddy's, didn't he do that for just him, like one or two other people? I don't know the whole story behind it. I just remember hearing about it, and yeah, and uh, the sequels came out fast. Like within a year, he had five. Right. I mean, it's crazy. So, uh, yeah. Uh, well, let's look at Fusion. You guys ready? Yeah. All right. Um, so, internet, yeah, yeah. Uh, this is showing you some of the stuff. Actually, I think we did this one as well. Uh, we did a first look at this game. Um, 
uh, several earlier in the year. Um, and these guys were in Athens, Georgia. I believe it was this one. I don't remember off the top of my head, but it was pretty cool. But, um, you know, in their web st store, I mean, this is literally just really, uh, this is literally just pulling off of their web store, showing you all the kind of things, you know, and, and assets that you can get. But anyway, so, um, we're going to, we're going to try to make a game here. We only got a little bit of time. So, uh, we're going to kind of speed through this. So the very first thing you want to do when you make a game is file new, right? So if you can't follow along with that one, yes, I'm stealing this one, Chris. Uh, if you can't follow along with that one, just go ahead and close your computer and leave. All right. All right. So what are we looking at here? We are looking at uh, the storyboard editor. Um, so if you double click, uh, well, sorry, let's look around real quick. Uh, you look over here, uh, you see you have a workspace toolbar. Um, can, can you guys see this or do, you, do we need to dim the lights? The overhead is, has a lot of glare. I'm not sure where the, the best light stuff is. Let's play with the lights. Is that better? That's cool. You know, it's how the cheese is. I mean, the camera's not going to be able to see the menu on the left. Huh. Okay. Let's see what we can do here. That's butter. Uh, much butter. All right. So uh, where you're going to spend most of your time um, in programming or making any game is usually here in your workspace toolbar uh, and then the properties. Um, just like several other different softwares, yes, you can click and drag and redesign the, the GUI. Um, one of the biggest things my students always had trouble with is they would pop out the window and wouldn't know how to get it back in there. But yeah, it just seats. Gotcha. All right, cool. And then, of course, you know, when your mouse changes to that, then you can move it around. I've got a glitch that does something. Anyway, <laughs> um, so double click on this uh, thumbnail or double click where it says frame one. And uh, you should see this. All right? Everybody here? Yeah, cool. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, look, I'm actually going to get up and move. There's just, just this once. So let's take a look at this and what are we looking at here? Um, this white space represents your stage. Right? Like, what does the camera see? Okay? The this gray area is what's behind the scenes. It's like backstage. So, you know, like if you're going to pull out a prop or, you know, um, like we're going to make a space shooter. We're going to attempt to make a space shooter. So a bullet object, right, is not visible on the screen when you first start up the game. So it needs to be behind the stage. Yeah. Make sense? Right. Okay. Cool. i got to remember that I'm talking to experienced game developers here. So... <laughs> Um, the library toolbar, light layers, um, you know, you can check out all kinds of stuff, the tutorials and everything. Um, uh, yeah, and there's all kinds of assets and, and examples that they give you um, with this. Layers, like you can use layers, um, multiple layers to create like a, a parabolic background, for example, or either like if you wanted a foreground that your character would run across or in front of. Exactly. So yeah, you yeah, can so work in layers that way. Right. Yeah. Oh, did I say? What else? Parabolic. Oh, whoops. <laughs> parallax. <laughs> Sorry. Parabolic. All right. Uh, and of course, if you ever accidentally close something, you can always uh, view toolbars, properties, and pop it back in. Okay. Um, so we're going to do uh, a space shooter. All right. And the first things first, uh, oh, frames. With the free version, you're allowed up to three frames within your application, right? The full version, you can have as many as you want. Um, and there's some other restrictions with the free version, but anyway. Uh, so uh, we're going to create a space shooter. Yes, we are. So if we were to click on application, uh, down here at the bottom of your properties, you can see all the different options that come along with it, right? Events about HTML5 exporting. But if you click on window, uh, the size that you see here, uh, you can edit that, change that. I usually, I don't know, what, 1024, 480? Let's see what happens. Yeah. Now notice, if you hit that, uh, you know, would you like to modify all of the frames? You know, because we're telling it to do it from the application, and you say yes. And there you go. you got a pretty big screen to work with, right? If that's too big, then just shrink it up a little bit. Um, let's see, what else? Color, 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 color. Yes, we want to change the color, don't we? 
Let's click on, um, yeah, yeah, help. Help your neighbor. All right. Is quick question? Yep. Uh, is there a way to save layouts that you create out of all the windows and everything? I believe. You know what? I've never actually tried this, but I believe if you relaunch it, uh, it'll it'll come back the way that you set it up. Yeah. Uh, I haven't actually tried that. That's yeah. That's a good question. I, know I did that in Unity, and I found a tutorial that did that, and that's been really helpful. Okay. So yeah. Cool. All right, so our, our application's name right now is application one. Just like any one of the most important things you need to do with any project, you want to rename it. So just re right click on your application, rename it. I'm going to call it Space Shooter. S H O O T E R. I'm just going to name mine Siege just for the heck of it. All right, so cool. Now my application's name is Space Shooter Siege. You know, uh, frame one, this is going to be our game frame. So rename that one. Um, game, I guess, or however you want to rename it. Just keep, always keep your stuff organized. Um, now, you have your game frame selected, right? Look at the properties toolbar. You can see all the settings within it. Um, size, there's your 1024 by 480. Uh, background color. What color is the background in um, Asteroids? Purple. Okay. Well, if you click, <laughs> go for it. Uh, you click on background color. You can change the color. I usually do like an off gray or you know gray or um, slightly darker than black or not slightly darker than gray, not black. Um, some of the things like transitions, uh, fade in and fade out. Those are pretty cool um, to play with later. Um, I just you know keep an eye on it, explore it some more. Um, but here we got a background, right? And if we wanted to test our game, you look up here at the top, uh, you see you have run application or run frame, right? Just and because you know you guys are used to using Unity or something like that, you always iterate often, t play test often. So you know, obviously, if I run it right now, the only thing you're going to get is just a screen. But uh, if you, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, so, all right, we're going to try to do a similar thing to Asteroids. So uh, we would need a ship. spaceship. And what is a spaceship? Player. Object. 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 That's very good. <laughs> so uh, everything, you know, uh, Fusion 2.5 is an OOP, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and just think along the lines that everything is an object. Everything is an object, somehow, some way. That's what I try to drill into my kids. All right, so how do you put in an object? That's a great question. Right click in the middle of the frame somewhere. What does it say? Edit. Insert object. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so a player is a player object is going to be something that you can move around and play around with, right? Uh, so what kind of object do you think it should be? Active is the first one. Yep, very good. You can either double click on it, hit OK, whatever. Then you get this little crosshair thing, looking doohickey. Yep. Just basically click it somewhere and place it. All right. Now you have the click team sprite, right? The temporary sprite that they give you. You can uh, slow click it once and you know resize it like so uh, you can double click it uh, if you double click it quickly you'll come up to the sprite editor oh, nice. yep it does have a sprite editor yes you can do animations and, and uh, affix your own animations and I see it's ah, you get you get the just come here Where's the animation? Down the bottom under frames? yep yeah yep so with animations oh, I see. Okay. Uh, you can like uh, clone frame, uh, new frames, you can add, add all your different frames and so forth. Um, but, you know, due to time, I'm not really going to get into that too much. Um, but basically, all right, looking at our sprite editor, uh, let's create our ship. Uh, you can use your mouse to zoom in, zoom out, whatever, right? Dude, I'd, I'd love doing that too. Just <laughs> boosh, 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 right? Um, control A. Wait a minute. Control A. There we go. And delete it. Yeah. Uh, let's do something simple. Uh, see over here where it says size and opacity? Mm -hmm. All right, that's your uh, pixel size. So I'm just going to do three pixels. Um, if you look over here to the right, you can see your color palette, all the different colors available to you. Uh, you just simply either right click or left click uh, the color that you, of your choosing. Um, so, like, I left click this white right here. So now, whenever I start working oh, that's way too small why is it oh it's still 
There we go. I have the uh, straight line tool selected and I increase the pixel size to three, uh, set the color to white, and I'm just gonna make a simple triangle. I'm not worried about perfection. Yes, I am. Come on, you. There we go. Let's make a triangle. Just like Asteroids. Uh, another simple thing, fill tool. You can fill in the middle with the you know with your black color. Obviously, the rest of it's transparent. Uh, letting you catch up. It's okay. Another cool while you're while you're doing that, something to keep in mind is fusion is very lightweight. Like um, yeah, I may be using a fancy computer here, but like uh, my wife's ta laptop is uh, rather old. But Fusion runs no problem on it, you know, exporting and building and working in it, it. It's a very, very lightweight program. That's another reason why I'm such a big fan of it. Because even older school computers have, doesn't have a problem working it, you know, <laughs> so. Got it? We figured out how to zoom in. Okay. All right, yeah, you can use your mouse or right here. You should have asked. We don't have mouse. Okay, yeah. so then you have a zoom button right here. Yeah, yeah, we found it. All right. Um, so uh, something else to keep in mind for the future, uh, collision detections, right? Uh, Fusion Sprite Editor automatically determines that the transparent area is your hitbox, or I mean, is not your hitbox. So, you know, any of your sprite uh, dimensions is the hitbox. Now, you can turn that off if you want to. Uh, there is a way to do that. But anyways, we have a spaceship. Yes? Yes. Yes? Okay. <laughs> All right, let's click OK. And there you go. There's your spaceship. Um, again, you can uh, single click on it once, click on it again, click on it a third time, and you can actually rotate it as you wish. Um, control Z to undo. And notice something here I forgot to show you, point out. Uh, the orientation is pointing to the right, and because, arrow, yes, the arrow is also pointing to the right, so if you needed to change it to an up, or you know, left or right, whatever your orientation focus needs to be. But you know, for for the sake of speed here, uh, we got an orientation to the right. So we have a spaceship on the board, right? And if I were to hit run right now, test the frame. Obviously, nothing's going to happen, right? Correct. All right. Why is that? No functions. No functions or physics, yeah, right? <laughs> um, so if you select, notice now here, uh, you have uh, your objects are being displayed, right? Uh, you have your, act, it's currently named active object. So we want to rename that, obviously, to our player. Player. So now we have, it's named player object. Um, and if you look down here in the properties toolbar, you can see that the options have changed a little bit where we have display options. Obviously, we want it visible at start. Um, uh, and then what, look at the little running man next to it. Click that, right? And currently, its movement type is zero, uh, and its type is static, which means it doesn't move, right, obviously. So if you click on that, boom. There's your physics, yeah. right? And it's a spaceship type of physics that we're looking for, right? So, what kind of physics do you think we should use? <laughs> huh? Spaceship movement? Yeah, probably. Okay. Sounds good. If you click on that. Yeah, the physics in Fusion is really, really simple. All right? I mean, it's, it's awesome. But you click on that, you get this little pop-up window. Please insert a physics engine at the top. Okay. So, we need a physics engine object, right? You click on it again. Uh, important, the hot spot of the object is a physical movement, so it must be positioned at the center of mass. All right, so let's click OK on that, and let's uh, first off double check where our center point is for our mass. So if you double click and open up your sprite editor again, see this little eyeball thing right here? Right here. Um, if you click on that, that, that shows you where the current center of mass is. Right? And that's not where we want it to be. That's going to kind of move around wobbly in it. Yeah. So just kind of place it proportion where at roughly about the center of your spaceship. Gotcha. Once you do that, you can click OK. And so it told us that we needed a physics engine object, right? So 
What do I need to do? Do you remember how to put in an object? Right, right click, insert object. And what do we see? Physics. Physics engine right there. So you can double click it or click OK or hit enter or whatever you want to do. Obviously, um, I'm going to drop mine in the backstage, but you could leave it on the screen if you wanted to because it's not visible. But now we have physics. Huh? Did you drop it? I think I, oh, I never clicked oh, it. Oh, that's it. That's why. <laughs> Note to self, click the things. All right. And now that you have a physics engine in here, uh, it, it'll ap apply the in, uh, physics to all and any objects that you want physics added to, right? You only have to put it in once. You don't have to add it to every single object. And so it'll apply to anything that's not static, basically? Correct. Okay. Yeah. Um, there was, uh, let's see, there's something, actually, if we get time, I'll come back to it. But notice, now the properties has changed. Uh, you can see your settings for your physics engine that you can play with. Um, uh, it's size and position, which is irrelevant. Runtime options, a lot of data. But settings being the most important. Um, right now, we don't need to change anything. But if we go to our player object, select your player object, now go to movement, um, and you got your spaceship movement. You know, so let me see if I can drag this out a little bit more. There we go. Um, notice that this says player one, uh, movement number zero. You can actually add and change movements. So for instance, like uh, if you create it, if you clicked in here and um, hit this little plus sign, uh, don't worry about doing it. I'm just telling you what it can do for the future. Uh, you can add a new movement to it. Um, so in other words, Walking, yeah, jumping. yeah, yeah. So like, let's say you're flying, you're moving along, you hit a power up, and now your physics changes. That's in you. Know, so you call that trigger to change the movement. So that's what that's for. Um, player one, obviously, you can do multiple players. Uh, movement, initial directions. Uh, thruster is currently set to fire one. Um, that is not correct. I can tell you right now we want to use up. Are you okay? We're good. Did you mess up? That was, that was my leg. <laughs> huh? That was my leg. Oh, okay. For physically hurting yourself. Way to go. Um, another thing, uh, if you don't want to, uh, if you've been messing around with your physics and you know, you're not sure if you want it to actually just uh, run the frame, you can actually click on try movement and uh, it'll pop open for you. And it looks like, you know, I'm using the arrows. And if you didn't change uh, fire uh, the thruster to up, then you need to change it to up. Right here. Thruster to fire one. Oh. Yep. Change it up. Oh, do I have a little bit of mouse? Right. Or it, yeah. Yeah. It, either that, or it may have been the space bar. I'm not sure. I don't remember off the top of my head. Okay. Well, I'll see real quick. Huh? <laughs> oh, you want to try it? Okay. Try movement. Let's see what happens. No, that's not working. Nope. Oh, well. oh. It's shift. It was shift. Yeah, I found it. I shot it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So uh, we run the frame, or you know, you try movement. Actually, let's go ahead and run the frame as if we're actually play testing. Notice that uh, your player object is uh, initial direction is pointing in a in a random area, and that's set right here. Uh, movement initial direction. Um, you can change that. But anyways, you fly around. Yeah, your ship flies. Looks like it's working pretty good. And you go off the screen and whoops. There we go. All right. That's not what you want. <laughs> Assuming. You know, uh, this is what I was talking about right here. Movement, initial direction. You can actually click on that and set what the direction you want it to face at any given point. But, you know, being asteroids, you can clear it like so, or you can highlight them all. So, so just, I'm, I'm kind of glazing through these features yeah, as quickly yeah, yeah. as I can. Um, so, oops, there we go. Uh, all right, so yeah, I ran it, player object moves, and it'll fly off the screen if we let it, right? That's not cool. Initially, in uh, the original Asteroids game, if your player object goes all across the screen, what happens? Yeah, it comes back, it wraps around the screen. Right. Um, unfortunately, this is and everybody at Click Team was like, "What? Really? This is turned off? Um, <clears throat> we need to we need to code this." All right. So now we're going to start diving into code. Yes, we're going to start programming now. Yay. Yay! 
Look up here underneath tools and window and help uh, where you see you got your storyboard editor, your frame editor, which is what we're currently looking at, and then you got an event editor. Click on the event editor. All right, and here we go. This is where you write code. Yeah, new condition is basically the word if, right? Okay. Think of it that way. So logically, what are we thinking? What are we trying to do? Right, okay, very good. So if, new condition, what? Uh, here's all of our different, uh -huh. yeah, click on, click on new condition. And then uh, what were we saying? If our player object, right? You see here's your player object. Okay, select that. So it will show all the things that you've added. Uh-huh, as you add them, yep. Yeah, cool. yeah, yeah. Um, and notice on the right here too, there, and you'll see why. So, um, if player object, test position of player. Yeah. Right? Makes sense? Okay. Now, this pops up, uh, test position of player. Uh, you want to select, and I know it's going to be hard to see here. You may be able to see it on your screen better, but these little arrows uh, kind of turn into a blue hue uh, inside the frame. So select all of these little blue arrows inside the frame. So we're basically saying if the player object uh, position comes to any one of these inside of the frame. Okay, all right, click OK. So here, uh, now you see your code. If player object leaves the play area, then do what? Fancy stuff. Right, okay, <laughs> fancy stuff. <laughs> Come underneath your player object, uh, where, where this uh, grid is, right click, position, uh, oh, wait a minute, movement, yeah, that's what we're wanting to do, movement eventually aha movement um look what it says here wrap around play area right that would literally mean that the player object would appear back on the opposite end of the screen but the free version has it grayed out and everybody on click team you know when i told them about this uh they're like what really so uh they may fix that for three uh fusion three which is supposed to come out sometime uh next year hopefully but um so to expedite things and uh, just kind of make new rules tell it to stop all right so if now what this line of code literally says now if the player object leaves the play area then stop all right click run it see what happens boink pretty cool yeah not terrible it kind of works and is that the game's physics rotating still yeah yeah, it still applies its physics. Uh, yeah, uh, let's see, you crash at an angle, boom. Yeah. Yeah. You guys cool? Yeah. All right, we caught up. Um, so there, uh, a first line of code. Congratulations. You have an actual, technically, you have an actual playing game, something you can play with. Um, and then, uh, let's see, uh, what is the next thing we should do? Actually, I'll... I'll I've got notes over here, like over 30 pages of notes <laughs> <laughs> that I can go by. But um, so we've got a player object. Uh, if you click on your frame editor, remember where that is? Frame editor. It's up here underneath window. Oh. So if you look up uh, at the screen right now, real quick, uh, remember workspace toolbars, properties, and these four guys right here are what you're going to mess with the most in Fusion. Yeah. So event editor is where your code is. Frame editor is where you can look at the entire frame. Yeah, it turns out if you get storyboard editor, it grades out frame editor. Yes, that's true. Um, <laughs> that's what I was like, hang on. Yeah, so like if you've got uh, the storyboard is like basically your different frames. So yeah, like if you wanted to have level two be completely different, you would have a new frame, and that's where you could add it uh, here, or you can add it here. I mean, there's it's all over the place. It's yeah. just like anything else. Um, if you get lost, just double click on your thumbnail again and you're back. <clears throat> so we got a player object moving. What else do we want to do now? Pick up huh? something or shoot something. Shoot something? Destroy something. Okay, let's shoot something. Uh, so what do we need to shoot? Well, there's two things. Uh, one is a target and one is a uh, projectile. Okay, let's start with a projectile. Yes. Okay. Uh, like itty bitty steps. Mm -hmm. You know, you got to really break it. Just like yeah, in programming, you, yeah. you got to dig deep you know, and, and, and go as, uh, as fine as you can. So... Uh, a projectile, right? What is a projectile? An object. An object. How, what do we need to do? Spawn it behind. 
Right click. Huh? Oh, you're going too far ahead. <laughs> what is the first thing we need to do? Right click. Right click. What else? And then figure out whatever you want. <laughs> Insert object. What is a bullet object? Or the projectile object? I'm going to say bullet, okay? It's an Android. Uh, <laughs> bullet object. It's going to move and we plan for it to destroy things, right? So what kind of object does it need to be? Active. Yeah. Oh, where is that under if it's not under all of them? Huh? Where is active? Oh, it's under crackers and animations. Okay. There you go. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I was like, I see it under all, but I don't see it everywhere else. All right. We've got our crosshairs. Place your bullet or your active object. Notice on the uh, workspace toolbar, it's named active. We want to rename that, obviously. I'm going to call mine bullet. Call yours projectile if you want. Bullet takes less letters. Now, will it allow you to spawn multiple bullets in doing that? Mm -hmm. or you have to create, so you can spawn multiples of the same thing. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah, we're, we'll have to code it to do so. Okay. But, um, all right, so here's our bullet object. I'm going to shrink it um, to be about a bullet size. So, like, in comparison, um, that still looks a little too big. That's probably big, but that's all right. That'll work. Um, obviously, if you double-click on it real quick, uh, you're back in your sprite editor. Um, you can create, uh, you know, color it, whatever you want to do, select, you know, but for now I'm just going to leave it the bullet, I'm just going to leave it as the click team, uh, icon, the little icon. That makes a good bullet. All right. So if I run the game right now, what happens? Same thing with the admin, it's going to stay there. Yep. It's just going to stay there. All right. Very good. So it's, it's an active object. And remember how I said, just drag it off the screen because it's we don't need it until it's going to be called on right so all right um think logically how do we tell the projectile or bullet to shoot all right you know from the from the spaceship generally you give it an origin and you give it a, a vector or power of some sorts. okay so we need to code that right something yeah okay uh go to your event editor so start with the word if and try to tell me how do we shoot? So, if new condition, so line two, click that. Okay, if? Um, the bullet, maybe? Do we start with the, the object that we're trying to apply it to? Just have to click a key. Hmm? You have to click a key to call in the spawn. Mouse, mouse pointer and keyboard? That's yeah. Okay. That sound, yeah, that sounds about right. Okay. okay. Since we're on a short time frame, I'm going to go ahead and tell you yeah. that's not right. <laughs> you're, you're thinking correctly. But uh, Fusion kind of digs a little bit deeper uh, than that. So what you're actually trying to do is a player controller, right? You're trying to tell the player's controls shoot the to shoot. Yeah. So you need to click on player controller, player one controller. Joystick, um, read joystick state, uh, fire button, uh, what was fire button? The shift. One was shift. Uh, space bar is three. Okay, we'll do uh, and then uh, also notice that the orientation will be going up. Just turn that off. All right? So initially you had an arrow that was right there, or that is right there. Turn that off because we don't want it to do that. Gotcha. All right? And click OK. So um, <clears throat> if the fire button is pressed, then do what? Where? How? Get get in there. Come on, dig. Well, I mean, you're making the bullet at the like at the point at which you're trying to spawn. Like you, you need a spawn point. Uh huh. So either the the weight center point of the of the ship. Okay. So fire a bullet from the ship. Yeah. All right. Perfect. Love it. So if fire button is pressed, then over here at your bullet, right click. Look what it says right here. Position. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Go underneath. Uh, if fire is pressed underneath your player object because okay. that's where we want the bullet to come from right yeah. um, launch an object. yeah right click and launch an object what object do you want to launch uh, the player. <laughs> <laughs> oh you're gonna be fun launch the physics <laughs> yeah launch the physics engine awesome uh, yeah so yeah select your bullet object and then uh, you get a new window notice you can change the speed if you wanted to uh, but you want it to do what Use direction of the, uh, the player object. Very good. Look awesome. Look All right. So if we run it, what happens? Launch. Yep. Launch. Right now it's uh, 
on top of it, how would you make it below? Uh huh. That's a great question. All right, I was just getting ready to go there. I also want to show you something else here. Oh, oh that's right. I told it's it to also, stop. Now, is it disappearing when it hits the wall, or is it it's passing through because there's well, no exception? Look at this. Oh, that's fun. Look what the bullet does. I like that. Oh, you have more power than I do. I don't know what happened. Uh, well, did you give it the speed? I did a thousand. Oh. It just. Oh well. Uh, all right. So notice, look, gravity is being applied to the bullet. Oh, apparently you actually can't do a thousand. No, you can't. A hundred's the highest. No, no, no one says that. <laughs> <laughs> I looked at the editor and it's like, zero. What happened? <laughs> so I noticed you had gravity on earlier, but it didn't affect the ship. Why is it affecting the bullet now? Because it has a different set of physics. Is the ship physics? Mm, let's check so that out. All right, so, all right. All right, so a couple things got brought up. All right, right off the bat. First thing is you notice that the bullet is being, uh, is spawning from the center of the ship. Right? That's one thing we can tackle. And then the second thing that, uh, that we need to notice is that there's gravity being applied to the bullet. So we need to fix that too. All right? Close that out. And uh, let's see. Let's start with um, the bullet object. Let's fix what you were saying first. Like, where does the bullet object appear? If we go back to our player sprite. It's currently spawning at that origin point. So. This origin point right here? Well, uh, all right. So you have the little eyeball selected right now? Yes? Huh? Uh, I'm going to try this right there. What, the little star? Yeah. No, I've already done it. Oh, you got it. You right. figured it out already? Yeah. No, 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 no. no. I okay. was doing something else. Oh. He okay. had a, uh, he was spawning uh, two objects. <laughs> yeah. He was spawning one at zero speed and one at 100 speed. Oh, man. Okay. So, yeah. Interesting. All right, so we're at our sprite editor for our player, yes? Yeah. All right, so we have the, we can view our hotspot right now, right? Yeah, that's the That's center. for physics. Yeah. That has nothing to do with where the bullet's coming from. Correct. So if you go to the right to that, side is the action point. view action point. And if you click on that, now you can see where the action point's coming from. That's where the bullet's moving. So yeah, if you literally move it and drag it right here to in front of your ship. Well, but how would you get it to spawn from underneath it, so to speak? Um, okay. So well, like let me come back. Let me come back to that. Okay. Uh, if I click OK and start it, the bullet's coming. It's still coming from on top. Yeah. yeah okay. Um, so that's a great question. Let's figure that out real quick. Uh, go to your frame editor and bullet object. If you right click on your bullet object, order to back. Yeah. Now it's not going to be behind the background. Shouldn't be. Let's see. It's okay. So if the black is not even considered a frame or a layer. Mm -mm. It's just very, very, okay. Yep. So, you know, and again, if now if I were to move that hot spot to the center of the ship and run it. Oh, that didn't fix it. Let's right click order our to the front. I bet you it'll work now. Nope. Well, golly, you guys are just order to back. It's back. Okay. Do I really want to spend time trying to figure that one out? That is neat. I did. Big of a deal. No, it's not. I, I kind of like. Yeah. Let me go ahead and just move the hot spot along there. You kind of threw a curveball at me real quick. I know nobody's ever asked me that. I like I said, you guys are the oldest students I've ever had. So <laughs> go figure. Let me make a note of that and uh, remember. So the other thing with um, that we're noticing is that uh, there's gravity to the bullet. It's obviously got an arc. Yeah, can it re-enter the frame if you shoot up? Let's yeah. see. Hmm. Let's go down here and see what happens. Oops, no, go down here. Yeah, I should come back in. Whoa, the objects? So when it's out, it gets deleted. Yeah, so when I, when I press play on mine, it actually opened up a little object. Uh, Mm -hmm. counter and I was button matching I can only get up to 10 objects so it's actually deleting them for you so it doesn't uh, you're saying it's a very lightweight engine it's not going to crash the game that was going to be my question yeah. it's actually deleting them now yeah, that deleting is them. It, although if you uh, select your bullet object um, let's see where is that settings notice we didn't apply any physics to it either yeah. to the bullet object uh, So, and but yet there's gravity 
Yeah. Confusing, huh? Uh, runtime options. Let's see. Ah, here we go. Destroy object if too far away from frame. You can turn that off. So then, therefore, as you launch, you know, the bullet objects will stay out there forever. Or, you know, or it'll fall back down since it's gravity. But what actually truly is doing it, we want to leave that mark, you know, obviously check so that we save our computer resources. Um, but if you check your physics engine uh, settings, let's see, non-physical object, no, oh, where are you? Oh, I see friction and all kinds of other stuff on there, too. Mm -hmm. Gravity scale. Ah, create projectiles in the physical world. Gravity scale is currently at 100. If I change that to zero, and friction also should be zero, yeah, right? What's up above it with the friction up there, too? Add backdrop objects to the world. If you had uh, backdrop objects, because um, you can use uh, a backdrop object uh, for either just an, an, Im an image, or you can have physics applied to your backdrop object, too, so that you, like, you can literally make platforms and stuff like that. And gotcha. like way down the list of things, you know, I actually do that. Um, but let's, you know, so let's run. We spawned it as a projectile. Was that the action that we used earlier? Where is this? Because uh, projectile is the blue font up above. Right here, yeah. That's how we, that was the action, right? Yeah. Okay. So if we had spawned it as any of the other ones, it would have given it those properties. Correct. Got it. Okay. That's why. That makes more sense. Yeah. So notice, Ned, there's no gravity applied to it now, right? And so now our bullets will fly in a straight line. Yeah, gravity scale from the projectiles in the physical world. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> we uh, have a spaceship. We have a bullet that's being fired from a spaceship. What else can we do in the time amount that we have? What else do we want to do? Um, let's destroy something. Want to destroy something. Okay, what do we want to destroy? An asteroid, I guess. Sir. Huh? Sure. Sure. Something. So what is that something going to be? It is a... Object. Object. <laughs> you just let him just sit there. I know. <laughs> it's going to be the Sunday school answer. I know, right? Object. <laughs> so, tell me what to do. Um, Insert object. Insert object. Control new. What kind of? Yeah, right? <laughs> uh, I guess act. Act? Okay. Why would it be active? We want it to move eventually and disappear. All right. Cool. Yeah. Very good. Uh, so, I click it here. Uh, I'm going to make, uh, all right, all right, notice we read the name, it. Uh, rename your active object. Um, I'll call mine Big Ass, sorry, Asteroid. <laughs> you know, I do that, I actually do that on purpose to my kids, and half the time nobody catches it. So <laughs> um, Again, you know, you can double click your big asteroid and you can uh, edit the sprite uh, due to time. Uh, oh, what the hell? Let's do it. What the heck? Sorry. I'm going to control all, delete it, um, and draw a three pixel size white line, a little squiggly doohickey, like so. And I'm going to fill it with black. You can play along if you want or you can just leave it there. I right, click OK. There's my big asteroid object you can resize it to be slightly bigger than this player ship that seems fair all right and you can you know go along with it create like little create create uh, craters and whatnot and stuff yay all right so we have a big asteroid object on the screen what's next what do we want it to do um you to be able to collide with the bullet or something okay so what do we want to do? Like if I if I launch the game right now, obviously. I make it move first. Okay. Okay. Movement. Movement. We want the big asteroid. Okay, so the big asteroid. We want movement on it. Uh, so we need to apply physics, right? So select your big asteroid. Click on the little movement guy. Current type is static. What kind of physics do you think we should give it? <laughs> Bouncing ball. Yeah. Okay. Initial direction is in any one of these. Uh, speed is currently set to 60. So if I run it right now, that's pretty quick. If you oh, click, so if you. Ball doesn't automatically, you know, collide with the screen. I was expecting it to collide automatically. Well, the player did. <laughs> the player yeah, well, it's not a bouncing ball. All right. Okay. 
Well, we'll, we'll come to that. Currently, I, our, our setup right now, if I run it, the asteroid's moving pretty fast. In the original asteroid games, the bigger asteroids were the ones that were moving slower, so I'm going to change the speed to 10. I think that'll work. That looks pretty good. I like it. You guys caught up? Uh, speed 10. Yep. So, he also pointed it off, pointed out that uh, if the asteroid leaves the screen, it leaves, or when it reaches the edge of the frame, it leaves the screen. We don't want it to do that, right? Okay, so what should we do? Okay, so I'm gonna, the grid, I forget what it's called. Okay, editor. event editor, yeah. our code. So, I'm gonna guess on something that I think you showed me earlier. So we already have, oh, well, no, this is different. Okay, never mind. We, basically, we need to set up the same event as delete the play area. Okay. Just like the player. So if, uh, big asteroid object, Pos position, um, test yeah. position, yep. Uh huh. Click OK. Now what? Well, if the bouncy ball is it native in that that it will bounce if you tell it to stop? I don't understand the underlying properties okay. of that. Okay. Okay. So I'll right click um, movement. The bounce. There we go. That works. Look what else is also there. <laughs> like I said, I pointed this out to Click Team, like you know, the vice president for the uh, United States chapter, you know, and the the uh, I've, I've pointed it out to several of the Click Team developers, and they're, they they same same response. What? So yeah, you can do wrap around the area, or you can tell it to bounce. So could you could you make your player as an object and bypass that by giving it controls? If you dug deep enough, yes. Yeah, you can do it. Um, <laughs> all right. So for uh, just to keep it, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna select bounce. You can select wrap around if you want to, but uh, just to show you it works. Boing. Yeah, and obviously, just like the player object, if it had started out in an uh, an angle, initial direction was at an angle. Here we go. Yeah, it's it's moving slow, so it's it's literally mathematically. Just going to um, multiply its uh, trajectory by negative one. <laughs> you know, all right. Um, so obviously, you just saw the the asteroid fly over the spaceship. That's not something that's cool. What else do we want happen? Collisions. We want to blow something up, right? Yeah, we need collisions. So um, when you're writing code. For our programmers here, right? When you're writing code, a lot of times you want to comment and keep your code lined up, uh, and neat, nice, neat, and organized, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> if you wanted to, right-click on the number, and then you can uh, insert a comment or a new event uh, or stuff, something along that lines. So, so yeah, if you wanted to keep everything nice, neat, and organized, like for instance, you know, all the asteroid physics or objects. Um, then you know that's that's how you would organize it. Um, but for time's sake, because we've only got one hour left, roughly, uh, what are we saying here? What do we want to do first? We want to destroy it with a bullet. Um, player controls. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, let's destroy with a bullet first. Okay, so um, let's see. What new condition? Yeah. Would it be on the asteroid or on the bullet? What are we What are we saying? Well, we want one to hit the other. Okay. Doesn't matter which one hits which. Logically? Technically, no. Right. Sometimes. So, tell me what to do. Um, so then, if asteroid. Okay. Um, collision. Uh huh. Another object. I presume we get to choose the object. Uh huh. To do, hit okay, and then. Um, Come over here to your. The asteroid, right click. Is that what we're Uh huh. Uh, probably look for a, some sort of destroy down at the bottom. Uh huh. You are awesome. Yes. Way to think ahead. Wow, that's so nice you can do both like that. Yeah, so notice I put them on, on both. <laughs> notice I put uh, both uh, destroy the bullet and the asteroid whenever there's a call for the collision between. So, just for giggles, could you make your ship yes, that's why it's grow slightly or like level up? Sure. In the same action, it doesn't have to all be destroyed. Like, what do you mean? So, uh, 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 let's say when Mario eats a mushroom. Okay. It's slightly larger. When you destroy an asteroid... So you would need a new sprite. You would have to create a new sprite for, like, you know, player uh, enlargement. You can't, 
well, or animated. But you can do other actions. So like if you clicked on the ship one, you could do something to the ship that's totally separate from that. Uh -huh. Nice. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, for instance, um, animations. You know, you would yeah. if you had when you had your animation set up already, it would call that animation. Wow. Uh, you know, you could start um, or change the animation sequence because currently, right now, it's just uh, the animation sequence is yeah. stopped. Sure, sure, sure. But uh, if you had um, uh, your animation set up and named and all that stuff, that's where you would do it. So, what if we wanted to do two things to the same? We have to make another action. So, for instance, the asteroid, we would want it to destroy. We wanted to play a sprite first. On so, the asteroid. so, right now, if you shoot the asteroid, it disappears. Yep. If we wanted to do an animation, mm -hmm. would we be able to do that in the same line of code? Or you would right click animation? underneath your, uh, if we already had the asteroid animation set up, like an explosion sure. or something. Uh, once again, this even though you have a green check mark right here that says destroy, you can stack more commands within there. All right, so you would cool. you would do animation, change the animation sequence to the animation of the explosion. What does it show up when you have multiple actions the same? Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, let me think of something. I'm just trying to figure out the syntax of how that works. Right. Because I love that you can do your code like that. Okay. Here, let's do this. We'll launch a player object. Just shoots a bullet back. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Launch an object. There we go. <laughs> a bullet object. Uh, in the direction of. <laughs> Check this out. Relative to. The player. The player object. I love it. Click OK. I've never done this before. This is awesome. And then click OK again. We'll see what happens. All right. So I'm gonna I'm gonna make my player move first. <laughs> That's awesome. So, okay, but you said now, you know, uh, what does it look like now that we have... Well, I want to see if we have multiple checkboxes or any of that. Okay, great, great. So now let's, let's dig in a little bit more deeper, uh, or even more deeper. Uh, up here, you know, you got your storyboard, frame editor, event editor, event list editor. Click on that. You can get, delve into uh, the specifics of your code. So you can move things around to have them in uh -huh. order? It, okay. does, it does work in sequential order. <clears throat> so, yeah, if you have... Yeah, you know, this line above destroy, then obviously things are gonna go wonky. Uh, if you wanted to edit this specific line, you can just double click on that and edit that one specific line. All right, did I lose you completely or? He's checking on the next screen. Okay. We heard some sound, so he was uh, <laughs> making sure they're, uh, well, they're, they're, if they're gonna be done, that we get the stuff. All right, so uh, since we're, uh, what else do we wanna do? Um, you figured that out on your own? It's basically the same thing as the previous line. Yeah. Just, uh, just destroy the player. You want to see something else cool? Uh, let's see. Uh, 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 um, okay, new condition. If the... Yeah, right, we'll, we'll do what you did. Another object. Asteroid. What, what did I say? Respawning another asteroid? All right, if the player object collides with another object, uh, you can either do yeah bullet or the big asteroid. This is what you were saying to do. Okay. Um, you, you had said you already did this, right? You already made this line of code. Yeah. Let me show you something else here, right? I've already told, like, the, um, you know, to destroy here, right? Yeah. I've got that line of code set up. If I click and drag this green check mark, uh -huh. you just copy oh, the code. It? Yeah. And it copies all of them. Uh-huh. Okay. Yep. So, you know, uh, control Z to undo it. Now, are you able to change? So, did you see what I just did there? Like it, it, like you said, it copied every single uh, line of code that was in that check mark. Are you able to change the image there if you wanted to organize like a different colored check mark or something? That's a good question. I don't so know. I've never. Of code you can put in, you know, bracket or uh, text to describe what you're doing. Okay. Yeah. Visually, since so visual, you can't like change the red one, so all your destroyed. That's a great question. I've never seen. I don't. I don't know. Request. Yeah. That is a good feature request. Yeah, because that would, that would be great. Yeah, because right now it, it, it's, it, I can see when you make an actual game, this would be a lot of green check marks. Yeah, yeah, very, especially if oh. with, 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 we're only using okay. the basic objects and three others, or maybe four if you're considering physics yeah. now. Um, so yeah, so not just you have it 
long for line of code, but you also have it super wide. So I mean, you just got a massive uh, battlefield of battleship. Like, <laughs> but battleship without color coordination of if you hit it or miss. So you want to see a full game? <laughs> uh, I mean, I, we're... I'd love to see a full game that you've made that's got, yeah. And, and, and we haven't even gotten to 3D, which uh, uh, no, I'm not, and I'm not even going to touch 3D yeah. today, okay? Do they actually have 3D in this? Yes. Oh, wow. You have to buy the expansion for it. Okay. How much is the full thing? The full version of uh, Fusion is uh, $100. And then uh, the, the, the different, like, um, uh, iOS, Android, and all that, they have different prices as well. The exports are different? Uh -huh. um, but it's a flat fee, not... not yeah, that's it. Is it. Does it have, um, so like, if you bought 2.5... When three comes out, do you get an upgrade, or is it? A, a uh, that's debatable. I've, um, I'm kind of arguing that one with uh, the Click team. I think they want you to go ahead and buy uh -huh. three, but I mean, 2.5 is it's still pretty widely being used. And the yeah. whole idea with the, doing the the free version and these little workshops is to help spread the word. And no, I don't work for Click Team. Yeah. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but um, uh, where were we going? Oh, that's still cool though. Cause, I mean, that's on par with uh, with Game Maker. Right. Yeah. I mean, yeah. So the, there is a 3D thing on there. I can't remember what it's called off the top of my head. Forgive me, Chris, if you watch this. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, the, there is 3D, and we're supposed to like actually talk to Chris about demonstrating the 3D function at some cool. yeah in, in a future I, workshop. So, far, yeah. so um, this is one of my games. Um, that I've been having help um, to recreate uh, the the original version of this game I created in Pi Game, uh, hard coded. Oh, wow. You know, it, uh, in Python. Um, and it was roughly around 500 lines of code. Um, so uh, uh, th this one's been polished up a lot more. Uh, Iskar Ogarusis has been an awesome help trying to figure out a lot of these, like, logical things and, like, playing around with it. Um, so he, he gets credit for pretty much all the programming <laughs> in here, a lot of it. Because a lot of this uh, is his, him experimenting and learning how to work fusion. So what do you want to see for do you want to see the actual game frame? Or do you want to see, what, 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 what would, frame? Yeah. Okay. So the game frame. We can play test it in the uh... Hey, where'd you go? Crashed. It did crash, didn't it? Wow. U S O B. Yeah. Come back here. No, that's not the one I wanted. I wanted the newest one. How, how big is that file, just to get a perspective? Um, is this megabytes, kilobytes, gigabytes? Oh, yeah. Here you go. Oh, wow, awesome. Oh, wow, dang. <laughs> Told you, it's lightweight. That's oh, and, that the, that's the project file. Um, that's the project file. Okay, that's .mfa um, is the project file. And not only that, um, yes, the assets, uh, the sound assets, and everything like that are 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 passed uh, passed along um, in a zipped up folder. But like, if I were to literally save the Asteroids game and uh, email it to you, and you opened it up in free, all of the assets would already be contained in there. You know, you wouldn't have to save uh, in an assets folder. But something you know as big as this game, yeah, we kind of need all of them. Uh, yeah, we're all right. Anyway, open. Says me. There we go. So this is the full version. <clears throat> um, come back to our game frame. There we go. Let's see here. Zoom out. What was the shortcut key? I forget. Control number. Yeah. Ah. There we go. So this is um, the frame. Um, and here are all the objects. And there's a lot. Notice you can uh, organize your folders. objects, yeah, and folders and tracker, uh, yeah, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, to, uh, to see the game. And this is broken. Sitting the right one. Yeah, the feature. Yep. This was not the right one. Yeah. <laughs> Close. Open. Where is it? I thought I thought I opened this one. Let's run it again. Run application. This is not it. That gummit. 
See, I had the, I had the right one already loaded up for us and everything. Ah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, it's all oh, it's a there's an uh, a line object that's kind of running up and down to help make it look glitchy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we'll just start the game. So the object is to eat the green dots. Try to anyway. <laughs> wow. You got the white thing? Yep. I am the white thing. Do we have volume? Oh, oh well. There is music. There is volume crunch, mm -hmm. and all that stuff. So, uh, the little what the green are dots are randomly appearing. Are you running HDMI? Huh? Are you running HDMI? Yeah, that's why. It's running. Well, yes. Yeah, it's, it's probably running through the, the TV, TV. And the TV isn't on. So, music was written by me, sound effects were made by me, uh, in, in the original version. That's literally me holding a microphone going, yeah, like, um, yeah, uh, like, yeah, all natural, <laughs> let's see, go, oh, what happened, hey, you, Start. Yes. Ready. I am ready. Oh. Notice the words chase can be eaten. Mm -hmm. That was a milestone that we had. Because huh. they're actually little objects like that. Can you ask me my question? Are these actually individual objects? That was a nightmare to create, <laughs> actually. Um, yeah, like, this is still, we're still working on it. Ooh, he left the frame. He wasn't supposed to. It's kind of like Pac-Man without... Um, walls, yeah. basically. Uh, you eat the purple pill, uh, the guy will run away for a little while. The yeah. green dots. I actually wanted to, uh, it's like semi title this one Survive and Thrive because that's literally what it is. Yeah. yeah. Um, the bluefish, or the blue guy, is worth more points. Did he get my Easter egg in there? No, he didn't. My Easter egg's not in here. All right. So, um, the little green dots are appearing uh, slightly faster over time in random spots over the screen. Um, if the red guy eats any of the green dots, he starts to get faster as well. Oh. Yeah. So, yeah, the object is just how long can you survive? Yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, there was one time. Can he actually eat his own purple dot and make himself run away? No. Oh, okay. Just make sure. <laughs> So the what he's what he programmed here is once uh, it collides with a, a pill, if you will, he just supposedly random or no, he's choosing randomly what pill to go after. Yeah. Yeah. You see, he's getting a lot faster. Still got a little couple of issues when he moves. Yeah. But that's really cool. That's good. That's impressive. Yeah. There's no way you could survive. That speed. Yeah. yeah. So is this just an array of, like, how do you, how do you have all those objects? Can you just pick them out of the, you just pick based off of the relative location of the nearest of an instance of an object? Look at the code. All right. Back. Here's the code. Okay. <laughs> Where did he bury it? Uh, so resolution, uh, obviously, is a... coded check marks would be great right now. I know, right? <laughs> um... Uh, he was working on playing around with uh, setting up uh, different resolutions so you can choose your own resolution. Um, here we go. Yeah, start a frame. Look at this. Oh, man. Yeah, timers. Uh, ignore controls. Hey, look, destroy. Oh, yeah, and also, like, if, you're, if your um, objects and list and everything else like start to get too long up here, Yes, you can scroll further this way, but or you can organize them and put them in there. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Okay. And there's there's that folder is holding all those little objects right here to create the word chase. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> um, golly. Um, game. Create positions to dots. That's what you were asking, right? Well, more how does the enemy determine which 
shots there are to eat. And he doesn't, uh, in the actual gameplay, when you're playing the game, he doesn't, he, do that. he doesn't do that. He's only constantly looking at you and chasing you. Yeah, but how does he do it at the end? Um, that's a good question. Because basically it's, if it was, uh, like, if this was a unity, it'd be, you know, just find the uh, game objects with, with the tag, you know, green pill. Right. And then just, you know, you have a, a list of 100, and you pick a random list number, list index, and you go to that. But this is not that. Post game. Here you go. I got to get to see this. <laughs> Uh huh. That's easy. <laughs> <laughs> it's so nice. Yeah. I can understand that. Yeah. Yeah. That's really cool. That and it, again, notice like as your code becomes more and more uh, elaborate, you know, there's the you know the a the AI programming for the fish we call this you know the blue guy a fish. Yeah. So and then you know post game you apparently just keep running around. So. But that is, oops. So those are grouped events. Uh huh. And then comments are separate. It's like this is a comment. This yeah. This is a grouped event. Okay. Yep. Gotcha. And how you do that? Totally in your video. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> uh, it's funny how we stopped at this point. You know, <laughs> I mean, do you want to go any further? I mean, explore more. I'd be or? interested to see uh, how you essentially would create a pickup. Like that's because that's a really basic thing, you know. If you're making a platformer, mm -hmm. um, let me see if um, let me see here. Let's see here. I think this is it. That's an awesome software. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're gonna have to do a game jam with you sometime on it. Uh huh. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Actually, you know what? Here's what I'll do. I will launch another free version. <laughs> and I will open it because, yeah, you see my desktop is scattered. Uh, space Shooter. I think this was it. Main menu. Ah, yes. You see I'm using the frames um, for a menu, right? You know, frame one is main menu, and obviously... You know, it's simple text. You create a button object. If that button object is clicked, then jump to the next frame. It's yeah. that simple. So a same thing along the same lines as, uh, you know, if you reach the end of a level to jump to, uh, you know, like a portal or whatever to jump to the next frame. Yeah. Same logic, right? Yeah. Uh, this was, uh, this is basically a uh, version of, the asteroids that I was kind of using to build uh, my curriculum. And as you see, it's <laughs> quite long. So I have, we now have a side scroller asteroids game. Gotcha. Yeah. Right? That's cool. <laughs> uh, I believe I turned off the asteroids to actually play the game, but uh, let's uh, run the frame. Yeah. So we got some AI guy. There's a chase state. Notice, once once he reaches a proximity, he'll start chasing me. Yeah. Um, there's an animation being played right there where the player collided. Um, parent child, oops. Uh, game over spawns right at the place where you die. <laughs> um, how does the parent child relationship work in relation to something like Game Maker? If you, if you know how Game Maker does it. Right. Um, I just literally said create new objects here. Okay. Uh, with, you know, if collision between blah, 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 you know, like, um, where we have right here, collision between bullet and asteroids, we have, uh, launch, uh, a, another bullet, or you could, uh, also say, you know, within this line of code, if you had your smaller asteroid object already made up, then you would call on that. You know, that's literally call on it three times, and that's exactly what's happening right here. Are you able to choose how it's exported? Like, could you do Java mm -hmm. cell phone application? Uh, I have the Android uh, pack here. Um, so let's see here. Select the application. 
current is, oh, well, I'm only, I'm using the free version right now. So uh, it only allows you to export HTML um, with the free version. Ah, let's shut you down. But in the full version, let's see, Chase and 8, Windows XE, right? You can do a, an XE, uh, Android, uh, HTML5. Those are the, the three Wait, extensions that I have. It says sub application. I've never used that. <laughs> but to build Chase and 8 as a sub application? Well, I want to run, I want to run a Unity game with this inside it. Oh, okay. And see, like, I'm, like, that's just as easily what we thought of, like, an application within an application. Yeah. So I was like, you know, how cool would it be to do something really simple, super simple asteroids, you know, build it in, like, two hours, mm -hmm. nothing complex, and have it inside of an arcade machine as a mini game. Yeah. Um, and that was literally what I wanted to do with this with yeah. this game at some point is to build a little arcade box with one joystick controller. Yeah. 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 Um, remember, here's another fun thing. If you're interested in uh, purchasing the full version, I mean, play with the free version by all means because you can have like over, uh, yeah, there's a lot of things that you can do with it. I mean, in fact, if you actually read the uh, installer rules, they actually tell you the limitations. Yeah. Right yeah. I've got, and I've got a text file. Over here, uh, I, I actually copied that uh, on a text file on my desktop. Yeah, but uh, yeah. so looking at the f um, the free version, insert an object. Right, there's all your objects that you can that are included with the free version. Yeah. Okay. Let's look at the paid version. Right click, insert object. Oh. But wait, give you extra there's money. more. <laughs> oh wow. There you go. So what is most of this? Is it just highly specialized preset, basically? Mm -hmm. OK. So a lot of it, you could probably still build something akin to it. Yep. Um, this is just preset stuff. Yep. It's a lot simpler. I got you. Are you able to put in an advertisement window? Yes. It's in, there is, yes, you can do in-app uh, in advertising and everything like that. Perfect. Yep. Like Flappy Bird, I mean, <laughs> well, but that totally changed what was possible with Mm -hmm. And that guy was making forty thousand a day. Yeah, oh wow! Was, yeah, yeah. He was making some serious. yeah, and and the crazy thing is, he took it down, and that made the hype go even higher. Yeah, <laughs> he was getting too much press, and then it released again. Yep. Yeah. Hey, that's that's good business. Yeah. yeah I mean, good got, business planning. It was, it was um, about hundred million downloads in the first week or whatever. That's yeah, ridiculous. It was, it was dumb, but that many ads, I mean, it made a lot more sense. Yeah, that's one of the reasons why I was asking if you could export it to Java or whatever. Um, yeah. The actual ex uh, exporting as Java, I guess. Or, or something that's compatible with iPhone. And well, Android yeah, like it does have those as, as exportable options. I don't remember if he, he was saying that he thinks that those are separate uh, purchases on the store. Um, like you have to buy the right to, to do yeah. that. But they do have ah, it. Here we go. Android UWP. Oh. Not sure what that is. What is it? Hmm. Universal Windows Platform. Huh. Xbox One. Yeah, I see. Okay, gotcha. Okay. And uh, he's also, um, hopefully I'm not breaking any kind of NDAs by just saying this particular fact. Uh, he's also got a developer kit for the uh, Nintendo Switch. So while you're here, since you're dealing with the internet, um, what is the sub application? For you can find that, like the export is sub application. As a pause menu. Yeah. Huh. I, I'm, I've only been messing with Fusion for about, you know, almost a year now. So yeah. Yeah, there's still a lot to learn. Yeah, for sure. You know, I mean, my, my whole point with this little workshop and like what I do with, uh, you know, Your my students. students, you know, is just to get them started. And, um, and, that, and that's what this example 
over here was. I mean, it, just using the free version alone, um, you know, I'll show you the code. That's all the code that I have uh, for everything. And, you know, it's a side-scrolling Asteroids game now. Yeah. You know, um, and, and that's done, the side-scroller is done by, uh, you know, you set up your uh, window size, right? Yeah. But the frame size... Is separate. Is different. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, and you can either, you know, go long ways or, or you know, up uh, horizontal or, or vertical. Yeah. Um, let's see. So, yeah, I showed you, uh, you know, creating a... Now, here's a, here's a question. Um, there you go. Do you have access to, uh, to the frame size via code? Yes. Okay. So yeah, that's that's but that's what uh, uh, Scar was trying to do with um, the uh, resolutions. Well, I mean, less the resolution, more like the frame size itself. So, um, so basically, if you were going into a place and you wanted to zoom out, could you have it zoom out, and so you could see more of the landscape? You know, if you're if you're doing this and then you go into a boss battle, right? And it zooms out, so then you can see your tiny self and then this big boss. That's a that's, yeah, I'm sure you can, yeah. yeah um, I helped a, a student with, um, we, I helped him as, as a senior project mentor, and uh, we did a, a two-player game on one keyboard, and so we made, it, one of the last things we did was uh, set it where when the players went farther apart, it zoomed out. Right, so okay. Helped to make sure that you could see both of them, and then you know when they're walking, and then as they come back in, it zooms back in. Okay. Uh, that. So, so yeah, like, so with that, and that was in Game Maker, so I know it's, it wasn't yeah, it, super it, it, complex, but I wasn't sure if you have access to that. I know it's possible. I don't know how to do it off the top of my head. Yeah, that's uh, I was just more curious, like, if you could think it was possible or not. And what, uh, initially, like I said, I'm building this one uh, as I'm writing uh, my curriculum. This curriculum is going to be used for schools. Mm -hmm. You know, as I said, I call them notes over here, you know, and there's over 30 pages of this stuff. <laughs> but uh, uh, one of the conditions that I'm working on uh, in writing, you know, like, literally what I'm doing is I'm writing the steps on how to do it. You know, and then and, and doing it and yeah, making yeah. sure that it works. Um, but there's a thing uh, where you can do, um, like, what I was about to write here is uh, once you kill all of these guys, the, a bigger boss would come out. Yeah. Right? In, in that kind of condition. And so that would be the condition that, you know, where you're saying, you know, zoom the frame back out a little bit more. And that, that'd be cool. That's a good idea. Can you, on an object, can you have multiple action points? Mm -hmm. Like, is, there, is that an array? Uh, what hit points? No, like like when so you had the whatever they call it, the origin, the mm -hmm. um, the hot box. The okay. Hot point. Yeah. Um, so that's your your. The origin, point. yeah. The origin. Is that one? Is this? And then the one that's it, that's applied to physics. Yeah, and the one beside it is called the, the, the action view point. action point. So that's yeah yeah you can set up like where. Have multiple of those. So like you're saying, like if you had a boss that was like this tall, if you hit him in the head, it, it reduces his HP more. Well, shoot him in the middle, it doesn't hurt as much. Or shoot him in the foot, doesn't. Well, hurt. I was actually more thinking like with this, like let's say you had uh, a spaceship that had two guns. Yeah. Um, okay. On you know one on each wing. Um, that is a another good question. Is that or would you just do it by creating a parent ship? Yes, with that's that my logic. Two separate wings, each having their own. I was actually, I mean, so same thing. What you're saying, if you had two guns. Where you wanted two bullets coming out, yeah, you would uh, attach, you know, your two guns, the it's objects. An object. Yeah, yeah, two different, total different objects. But you know, and that's what I was going to suggest. Like if you had one big boss yeah. with three different hit points, Maybe yeah, hit him in the head. It's you know, it hurts gut doesn't hurt as much, foot doesn't hurt at all. Yeah, yeah, you would still have three different objects. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Again, fusion is o op. You know, everything is an object. Yeah, and when you simplify it that much, that's kind of that's kind of what you almost have to do because. Mm -hmm. To, to go from... I mean, even, even in Unity, if you wanted to create a character, well, yes. you would still have to de de uh, designate, you know, different hit points, or, uh, I don't know, do, can you do that to just one object in Unity? Basically. Like, yeah. if we're doing exactly what we just described here, yeah, you can do the same thing. Okay. Um, but my thing was, like, if, you're, if your approach is to make this as simple as possible with no code, and now you're having arrays of there. points, then you're kind of, you're breaking your... your your purpose with the with fusion as a software right so it makes more sense to simplify it you want multiple action points you create multiple objects each, each only has one action point 
All right. That, on the simplest of it, yes, there are. You can use arrays. You can use uh, what they're called global uh, qualifiers, um, which and uh, multiple variables and multiple strings and flags. Um, yeah, this obviously you know you can set up um, global variables, um, et cetera, et cetera. Flags. Uh, that's uh, a good uh, use for that. Was and I haven't gotten to it yet. Um, but yeah, if you trigger, yeah, you, know, you run over a spawn point, yeah. it changes your uh, your your physics type. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That, oh, interesting. Yeah. Yeah, this is something else that you can do. That's cool. um, oh heck, <laughs> you guys are fun. <laughs> Let's see here. So you you want to see some of the games that my kids have made? Yeah. What were some of the people that were? Huh? I'm I'm writing down notes. I'm trying to remember what the. Don't scan it. I trust my kids. <laughs> and, and again, all of these were made in uh, Fusion Free. Let's see here. Uh, the only thing is, is like you can only have one application running at a time. Yeah. Yeah. If you put multiple applications in there, eh. Uh, so let's see here. Open. Uh, USB drive. Let's see. Gosh. Beyond Space, Fort Farm, my own game, Pokemon Racing, Spoos Invaders. This was a funny thing. Um, this was a summer camp uh, at Maxwell High School, uh -huh. and um, one of the questions I had yeah, at the beginning of camp, I had asked you know, how many people uh, play Overwatch and how many play Paladins. Mm -hmm. You know, and then you know, a lot of these kids were like, "Oh, Paladins is just a cheap, you know, knockoff of Overwatch." I'm like. No, it's not. Uh, yeah, and then and, you know, and then literally pull up and show when the release dates were. It's like within three months of each other. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and, it was uh, just a, co a, a coincidence. By the end of camp, because camp was only four days long, mm -hmm. right? By the end of camp, um, there's a group of kids on one far side of the room and another group of kids on the other far side of the room. One created Beyond Space, which is a Space Invaders type of game, mm -hmm. right? And by the time we uh, we did play testing. They realized they made two Space Invader games. <laughs> it can't, and I was just like, Paladins Overwatch? Yeah, huh? Yeah, That's it can happen. Um, but uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, apparently, I think uh, somebody told me a siege a couple years ago that Paladins actually announced their release like six weeks before Blizzard announced Overwatch. Like, the, like Paladins came out later, but the, yeah. the, the, the announcement was actually made before it. Right. Yeah, which is, yeah. All right, tanks, you're welcome. Okay, so um, this uh, was the maze itself was uh, done from uh, mazegenerator.net, I think is oh, what it okay, is. Gotcha. Yeah, have you ever seen that? I think I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's pretty cool. Yeah, mazegenerator.net. You can literally generate all kind of mazes. You know, and and then it's, you just save it as an image and you can use that as your collisions? Uh, uh -huh. Yes. I was going to say by color, you can do that? Yes, you can assign. Uh, at first, what they were starting to do was um, creating individual objects to collide with, following along the the drawing of the of um, you know the original maze. Uh -huh. but Iskar's brain and his logic, he's like, no, you can like literally tell it the look at the colors. Uh, nice. So yes, you can. Uh, and where is that code? That brings you back to RuneScape and the macros. <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh There's your player one and player two. So it's a two-player game. Wazd is player one, and then arrows. yeah, Arrows is player two. Um, let's see. Overlapping backdrop. There it is. Stop. Yeah, but how, how is it attached? That is a great question. <laughs> oh, so it's basically you, you assign the, I presume, the, it's the transparency. transparency. Yeah, they can just delete the white. Yeah, yeah. It's transparency, and then as soon as you're hovering over anything else, it, they can't run into it because it's called. And it's not, it's not 100%. Um, in fact, you notice I made them do all their credits. But yeah, yeah, no, that's. Yeah, it's. That's, that works. Yeah, <laughs> they're colliding. But um, as you see, it can get stuck. It's not. A, not a hundred percent foolproof. Yeah. There we go. But yeah. That was one of the things. Can that you do invisible objects? 
Huh? So, yeah, so like if you wanted to, let's say, put a, a collision box or circle on that uh, tank beneath it, mm -hmm. and then use that to, to mask over other objects. Um, okay, so like what you're talking about there, let's see. Let me launch another. What the heck? <laughs> Just because I don't want to wait for Steam. Because I, I bought, I got mine from Steam. Gotcha. Oh, okay, I see. Uh, let's see, where is it? Oh, desktop. Go back to that. You notice the benefit Space of getting it from Steam versus... Huh? The, you notice the benefit of getting it from Steam versus the platform? I'll tell you after the session's over. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's Not, I don't want to say it, don't want to say it over camera. <laughs> um, so, game window. There we go. Ha-ha. Um... So player object, uh -huh. this green box that's attached, um, is the huh? The window? Yeah. Yeah, I call it. Um, where did I call it? Chase trigger. Oh. Right. And notice display options. Is it visible at start? No. Where is that? Oh, that's oh, under the, the yeah. inspector, basically. Yep. Gotcha. The, the the properties manager. Yeah. So you know, yeah, the cha it's that object is still there and it's attached. You know, to the and player you object. Can do logic on it. Uh huh. Like, so whenever I, you know, it's a chase trigger. So whenever he collides with that background object mm -hmm. or uh, backdrop object, yeah. Then you know it calls the chase state. Yeah. Which you know he's basically just look at. Let's see where's that code for the AI for that. Um. Yep. Yeah, there it is. If the enemy chaser is overlapping, the chase trigger, which is a backdrop object, mm -hmm. then look at. Look in the direction of the player. And then it keeps It'll just keep moving yeah. as it's, you know, looking at the player. And then uh, same goes for uh, these objects that I have here. You, you kind of see the gray outline. It's yeah. a little bit bigger. Uh, that's also uh, a look at, uh, but don't start shooting until he crosses that backdrop object. Mm -hmm. All right. So once the player reaches that, is that answer your question? Or? Yeah, yeah, basically, yeah. So was, I'm, I'm demonstrating two different ways of doing that. I yeah. was looking at it for, for a different purpose, but the, the logic is there. Yeah, yeah. It's still the same logic? Yeah, I was thinking of it like as a, because the tanks were colliding with the wall and getting stuck, so if you maxed it with a, a bigger collision, it might not have as much of a problem. Okay. Um, like that's my, that was my thought going into it, but this, this proves the same purpose. You can have something invisible and have the logic on it. Yeah. True. That's sweet. It's a it's a pretty awesome program. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, especially like you know, getting kids to make their own games. You know, yeah. all right. So get this. All right, you know, uh, kids anywhere from the age of eleven through seventeen. Yeah, that like I said, that's my age group so that yeah. I'm doing, or that I'm teaching. Um, <laughs> um, to watch them sit there and focus and work solidly for two and a half hours straight without a bathroom break. Or three hours. I've actually pushed them to three hours before, and they'd never get up out of their seat. They just sit there, you know, constantly, yeah. you know, working on it. It's an amazing thing to, you know, like I said, I I treated them the same way I was getting you guys. You know, you yeah. start telling me how do we do things, okay? Yeah, you know, and work the, through the logic. Yeah, work through the logic, and that's what like that that video uh, that I was talking about earlier uh, for making a peanut butter and jelly sandwich is hilarious. Mm -hmm. How tough it is. I mean, because you know, there's a point like. Uh, kid writes, you know, put knife in peanut butter, and so dad's like takes the knife upside down and drops it into the <laughs> peanut butter, you know, because it's not being specific, you know, you yeah. got to be super specific. Use the blade. Yeah. Um, it's a great, great example. Um, let's see. Gosh, there's one particular one that I'm looking for. I think it was at Maxwell Fort Farm. Yes, I think. Yes, it was. All right, so they. Uh, we'll run the application so that the screen can give credit where credit's due, <laughs> All right? Um, Google Images, they, uh, they didn't specifically tell. But uh, two of these kids uh, ended up having to leave um, the day before camp, or the day the last, the last day of day, camp. Yeah. They couldn't be there. So uh, this one uh, kid, um, Caden, he had to stand up and present this game all by himself. Oh, wow. <laughs> Whereas, uh, oh, no, it was Quran. Yeah, he was he was the one who had to present these, but these other uh, weren't there. So super simple game. There's llamas attacking uh, your fruit. 
right? And it's a survival game. And I, I kind of got a little frustrated with it. There is sound effects and all that stuff, I think. I just I think I just turned them off. But, um, yeah, Llama Reaches, game over. All right? So, it, it, super simple game, you know, they, and they only had a few days to do it because they knew they weren't going to be there the whole time. Yeah. Look at how much code they put into it. Wow. And this one's nulled out. This one's inactive. Yeah. So, that's another thing. Oh, thank you. Yeah, <laughs> if you want to comment out your code, you know, like, you know, if you want to test something and comment yeah. out your code, but you don't want to delete your code, yeah. yep, set active or inactive. That's what I use at work. Uh-huh. Yeah. For another cool feature. I'm hopefully, you know, looking at these games, it makes me... Another question. Uh, can you shift select multiple lines and right-click to set inactive? Yeah. Yes, you can. Thank you. Good. See, see, click team, they're praising you. All um, three of them. Okay, I'll, 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 uh, I'll, I'll one up you. Can you, I know you can drag and drop lines between each other. Mm -hmm. Can you use like shift uh, arrow key or control arrow key to move lines up and down? Or even alt, alt arrow keys up and down? I don't know what just happened there. Here, I'll, I'll just move on my computer so that if I can. Are you talking about like moving the lines around in like, priority? Like basically, if you, sometimes there's some programs if you uh, use like let's say Alt up and down arrow keys and you're on line two. Okay, so I just copied the code to a new line to seven. Um, you can sometimes uh, you can shift the lines up and down one. Um, so shift arrow keys is, is moving my selection, but um, like where basically. Line four and line three. Right. If I, let's say I did alt up arrow on line four, it would move line four to three and switch, they would switch places. And so then if you keep going, you know, four is at three, then two, then one. Hmm. Um, not every program has that, but it's really nice when it does have it. Um, so you can just, you know, if you have one line here, you just want to click it. Instead of dragging in, if you want to keep your hands on the keyboard, just ch -ch 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 and move it up real fast. So you hear that click team? Another suggestion. Yeah. <laughs> For three, right? For uh, Fusion Three. Um, gosh, what else? Um, I don't know. Any other questions? Or I mean, because you you've been coming up with some pretty cool ideas, and you didn't even bring your laptop no. to play along with. Um, yep, yeah, not gonna save changes to them. Um, gosh. Trying to remember where. I don't think it was this one. Wait, why is there a password function? Ah, oh, to create a password for your code. Yeah, you can do I that. By the way, the yes. Storyboard editor. There's a password function. Uh, so, think of this. Um, I think I'm trying to think if he did this to me in in this game. Um because there's an Easter egg that we're working on implementing. I knew he had it working at one point. Ah, there you go. You can password protect your code. Mm -hmm. Right? So it can be edited. Right. Gotcha. You know, um, or also you can you know, put an Easter egg for your players in there as well. Mm -hmm. You know, somehow, some way by you know, setting up a password to that. Uh, another another really cool feature, you know. Yeah. So yeah, you know, if you're not the only one working on this project, and you write some code, and you know it's beautiful, and you don't want somebody else to break it, yeah, lock it up. All right. So here here's then the ultimate question: How does this play with Git integration? Like, if you were to set this up on a GitHub or you know the bucket repo, right? How does this play? So with like what you're doing control? with um, like I'm I've got my kids using Google Doc or uh, Google Drive. Right, and literally just passing that MFA file back and forth. Mm -hmm. um, as for like editing it in real time, from what I understand, three, uh, Fusion Three is going to have that feature. So it's going to have its own version control built in. Uh, yeah, I think so. Okay. Yeah, or either at least get uh, capabilities. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, I know. I think Game Maker Two has that as well, so that makes sense. Right. Because that kind of seems like they kind of seem like to be on the same uh, competitive wavelength. Right. Um, with each other, which makes sense. Um, yeah. Well, well, when GM2 came out, I'd kind of 
<laughs> I'm done. Yeah, one point four was great. I love yeah, it. One point four is good. Yeah, one point four is great. But uh, I like the the scriptability of one point four, but I like that for especially for your purposes with teaching mm -hmm. you know, anyone. This is really easy to pick up. Yeah, um, which I really like that part. It's it is a little quirky, like especially for someone who's more experienced. You're like, why why do I do it that way? That doesn't make sense. Um, oh. But it's not illogical. Mm -mm. Um, Let's see. Gosh, do I have, I don't, oh crap, I don't think I have it, it may be on my website, but I, I wanted to show the code, student main games, Shiloh, there you go, simple soccer, into the oh, zone protector, Oh yeah, you showed me this. I showed you this one. Yeah, because uh, it's it literally calling on tangents, like uh, you know. <laughs> ah! Hush. So uh, player is the the ozone layer, you know, controlled by mouse. Uh, I I, re I wish I could show you. You're supposed to let the ozone or the get bad gases leave the planet. Otherwise, you know, it's going to destroy uh, the ozone layer. Yep, yep, emissions. <laughs> and then the uh, gamma waves, if they hit Earth, it starts to melt the ice caps and all that stuff. But the point was, the player control uh, is the mouse, and it's just a st stationary object, but it rotates. Um, and that was that one was kind of tricky to do. Um, yeah, I mean, it, uh, <laughs> yeah, but, uh, yeah, gosh, where's the code? Because like I said, like you literally had to u you know, use tangent commands. Or, I mean, you know, mathematics yeah. in order to make it work. Yeah, and I don't have that oh, game project on me. That's okay. Bummer. Yeah, that's one. Knowing how to use that higher math in something sim designed to be more simple gives you a lot more power. So I'd be interested. Mm hmm. Oh, and it's uh, like how I uploaded that, uh, this game, you know, to be re. <laughs> you know, that's, that's not good. You're not supposed to set your volumes that loud, right? <laughs> yeah, well, um, within, uh, you can, let's see if I can find, oh, you did not password protect that, I was going to say, um, start a frame, here we go, there it is, yeah, you can set the volume levels, and everything, oh, gotcha. yeah, samples, and then, um, yeah. Uh, just double click on this and see if it comes out with it. Where is it hidden? Set high score, set volume. So there you go. The volume control is a numerical value. Nice. Zero, 1 through 100. Um, can you change that view code? Hmm? Why would you? I mean, what, well, for... Well, like in gameplay, if you collided with an object or kill a boss, things get louder for some reason? Or Well, um, there's like, I know there's a talk here uh, that's going to probably be something along the lines. It's uh, about using uh, small amounts of audio uh, for large, over large amounts of time. Mm -hmm. so, you know, your, your, your dollars work better, so you can use your, your game audio um, to work well. So basically what they do, what the idea is, you know, have your chord progression and have all of your different instruments over top of it, mm -hmm. all on separate tracks. And so, like, so, as you're traveling through uh, an area, yeah, uh, and so the music you, changes as you... Yeah, so it's no okay. different melody, or necessarily. I mean, you could have different melodies, but basically you just have, you know, instead of your, you know, your classic rock group, you know, you got your two guitars, rhythm lead, bass, drums, and keyboard, you can make it be a random three. So, so maybe it's just the lead in the keyboard and the bass, and it changes, so you, you fade in and out to make this five minute track sound like a different, you know, an hour's worth of sound. Right, as long so as you get, um, yeah, as long as you got your, well, mm. that'd be not true. Too, not too different from when you have an action sequence. Yeah, I, I was getting ready to say, like, I, I can recall things like in World of Warcraft, for instance, you know, as you reached 
uh, different areas on a map, you yeah. know, or you know, get into a fight, or whatever. Uh, yeah, he, he, well, it's not necessarily switching songs, or you know, it'll go, move to a different part of the song that has more instrumentation. You know, it's still the same melody, yeah. but you know, it, there's more instrumentation. You know, you know, now drums are added, or your you know, yeah, big, exactly. you know, saxes and you know, stuff like that to make it sound like more intense and stuff like mm -hmm. that. Um, that would be cool to see. Uh, I. I haven't tried to program anything like that. Yeah, yeah, that's like basically anything. I'm sure you can. My I mean, because I'm just thinking uh, off the top of my head, again, you know, just like a, a collidable object or, or area, mm -hmm. you know, you go into an area and then set volume to play sample track of da 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 Yeah. You know, and it can do that seamlessly as long as your loop tracks are correct. Yeah. <laughs> or your, um, yeah. Yeah, as long as, uh, what's the word? They're seamless, you know, there's... The, the, the audio files, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Where you can't tell when one loop starts and the next one starts. Mm -hmm. uh, stops and starts. Yeah. So. Yeah, no, the, the Unity mentality that I really like when programs do it is uh, anything you can click can be edited via code, basically. Okay. So it's like if you can set the, the volume, you know, in a sub-menu somewhere, well, I should be able to edit that in my script somewhere. Right. Um, so... Yeah, and, I, and like I said, the resolution with uh, this, with um, Chase and Nate that uh, Iskar was working on, that was something else that he was uh, playing with. And it was it was super tricky. Where is all that? There you go. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, you know, just setting the screen sizes. Uh, yeah, he, there's actual button, he had actual button options to choose from that way, you know, you could choose your own resolution. Okay, yeah, yeah, no, that's, that's good. That's good. Do you have to type that in? No. That's all the link. Huh? Howdy. Yeah. Doing good. Um, golly. Now, are you able to change any of that, or? Sure. Like, if, well, I don't want to, but, I mean, yeah, you can. You can, uh, like, you're going, I'm now in the event list editor. I don't know if you saw what I just did there. But are you able to change any of that code without actually going back to the process of selecting a, uh, an item? Like, I know you can click an item and then like change If I double-click that. But you're not able to actually change the code itself. Sure you can. But you have to go through this method. I would yeah. I say it's, you know, like, it's to the next one. So okay. Wrap up yeah, that's fine. Cool. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Ten minutes till, or you know, any other last hurrahs? I'll be here all weekend. <laughs> I definitely like that. I think especially for kids, that's an incredible way to. Yeah. That's really good. Yeah. None, none of my kids have ever gotten this deep into it, but they've always tried to. You know, and the, the funnest part about all this is, you know, when you know, the kids will come in and they they have all the great ideas for their games, and their scope just goes a mile long, yeah. and then they start diving into trying to program it, and they're like, oh. Okay, there's a lot more that goes into making a game. Yeah. So I love it. That's that's great. Yeah, uh, it's a great program, great software. All right. Well, I guess um, we'll call that a wrap, maybe. Yeah. Good. Cut. Maybe. Let's see. Right about. No.